Greetings loves, it is I, Tactical Girlfriend. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody's doing well. Today, I'm going to be talking about the fundamentals of shooting a carbine. Now, there's a lot of debate about what exactly a carbine is. Basically, it's a shorter rifle of some sort, shorter than a longer rifle of some sort, usually for some sort of defensive use or tactical use. In this case, I'm mostly gonna be addressing things like AKs and ARs, particularly the shorter ones at that end of the spectrum. Not gonna get into all the minutia about what exactly is what, but if you are orienting yourself in any manner around defense and you are intending to use a rifle of some sort, most of this information will apply to you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now first, let's talk about stance. Stance is an extremely subjective kind of thing. However, it is a good foundation and platform from which to build your rifle's shooting. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to default to some sort of stance or another, maybe have a few in your repertoire, but generally, there's some pretty commonly agreed upon principles for contemporary shooting of carbines. So let's talk about that first. Now, when it comes to stance, contemporary stances tend to favor some sort of fashion of facing your hips towards a target in a squared off manner. There's very good reasons for this. For one, with the advent of body armor becoming more prolific, you want to generally face your target with as much surface area of your body armor, so squaring off as best as you can is a good place to start. Also, it gives you a really good field of view and field of range from which to fire from. Generally, with a more squared off stance, you're gonna be able to swing that carbine around left and right, engage all sorts of targets in a very wide field. You're not gonna be obstructed by some awkward offset or bladed stance, in which case you would have a limitation to your weak side probably. In this case, you actually can engage targets very effectively and very rapidly in all sorts of different directions. It also gives you a better field of view from which you can also see threats and better assess situations and engage targets from. Now first, let's talk about feet. I generally like to position my dominant foot maybe about half a step to a full step behind my non-dominant foot. This gives me a little bit of an offset so I can better manage recoil. Imagine getting into a fighting stance. If you want to resist someone pushing you down, you do put one foot a little bit behind the other so that you can better distribute your weight and lean forward in order to anticipate that recoil or that push. Here we're talking about recoil, so it totally applies. So I like to generally have a very slight blade to my stance, but nothing extreme because it will completely mess everything else up. You also want to make sure that your feet are about a shoulder width apart. You don't want them all too close together. You also don't want to be doing a tactical split. Sensible shoulder width apart will give you a very stable shooting platform without doing anything unnecessary or hyper extending anything. Next, the knees are really crucial. You don't want to lock them. You want a slight bend in them. You don't want to get into a weird crouching stance that's going to strain your legs or anything like that. That's not going to help you. But having your knees generally just with a slight bend will keep you mobile. It'll keep you spry. It'll allow you to be a little bit more dynamic. Moving up, we then have our hips. You want to have your hips squared off towards the target as best as possible. This will further ensure that your torso is properly oriented towards the target so that the rest of your body doesn't have to do as much work in terms of managing recoil and aiming. Speaking of hips, we also want to pivot our torso from the hips forward so that your nose is over your toes. You don't want to hunch over, you don't want to arch your spine in any weird, awkward, or uncomfortable way. Simply use the rotation from the hip level to rotate your entire torso forward so that the weight is resting on the balls of your feet so that you're not leaning back on your heels and there's recoil pushing you back with you having nowhere to go. That is very poor recoil management and it will make follow-up shots a huge pain. Moving further up, we then have the neck. The neck is an often overlooked and very crucial part of the stance. You don't wanna go all tactical turtle and hunch your neck down and forward and cut off circulation in your brain and then pass out because you were a dodo that's just not gonna do you any good. So keep your neck as upright as you can, comfortably so. This will help you maintain situational awareness. It'll just keep you a little bit more limber and mobile and it won't strain those muscles because that's just not gonna be good for you. We also wanna talk about the eyes. The eyes are very important. It's what you use to actually aim with. So. Make sure that that's oriented in a way that makes sense and is comfortable and sustainable. Don't have your chin locked all the way down to your torso and have your eyes pointing towards the top of your skull. That's going to be a horrible posture. And again, it's going to get you into that tactical turtle position that we all want to try to avoid. Keep yourself nice and relaxed. Be natural and upright with your head. 
Okay, now that we know how to orient ourselves around the carbine, how do we orient ourselves on the carbine? There are generally five points of contact that you need to know about. The first two are your hands, of course. You have two of them, you grip the rifle, and you shoot it. But there's a lot more to that. You also have your shoulder, in which the buttstock or brace sits in. You then have your cheek, where you have your cheek weld for the stock or chin weld if you have a crazy high optic mount. And then you have your sling, which creates tension around your body and on the rifle, further securing it in proper place. All five of these are always crucial. You should always try to use all of them as much as possible. And that way you will get a much more stable shooting platform and it will allow you to aim a lot better. And it will also allow you to make better follow-up shots. Now let's talk about grip, starting with your shooting side grip. Your dominant hand is going to go around the pistol grip, wrap all those fingers around except for your index, of course. Keep your grip kind of loose, doesn't have to be super tight, and put your finger on the trigger. You should have a fairly light and easy trigger pull. You shouldn't need to jam that whole entire finger back as hard as you can. That's not gonna do good if you're very tense. You need to have control, and control comes with relaxation. So keep your firing hand fairly relaxed, but have a good grip on the gun. All right, now what does the support hand do? Obviously, it holds the forward end of the rifle out so that you're not trying to Rambo this thing one-handed. Make sure that you're supporting that weight with your support hand, of course. But this also doubles as a form of recoil control. Proper grip on the forward end of your rifle or carbine is going to help you make sure that that recoil is manageable and that you can make quick follow-up shots. There is no substitution for technique here. A muzzle brake is not going to help you if your fundamentals are terrible and you should never use muzzle brakes anyway. Make sure that you're using proper support hand pressure and grip to make sure that you're actually controlling that recoil effectively. Okay, now how do we get proper support hand grip? First of all, you want to make sure that you find a good indexing point on your rifle which allows you to have a slight bend in your elbow. You want to make sure that the elbow is slightly bent. You don't want it locked out because you're going to hyperextend your arm and that's not going to do you any favors. You also generally don't want your arm super bent because if you bring your hand forward, you're not going to have very good control over that muzzle. Now that also varies for person to person and whatever they're shooting, but generally you just want a slight bend in the elbow. As far as your hands go, I generally like to advocate a C clamp, in which case I wrap my fingers around the underside of the rifle or carbine and then I put my thumb over the bore, basically right in line with the muzzle. Now, if you are shooting a rifle that doesn't really facilitate this very well, in this case, this AK with a fairly low mounted optic, I have my thumb in C-clamp position. I'm going to be obstructing my optic here. So what I like to do is then modify this a little bit just by putting your thumb on the side of the grip instead. That keeps it out of the way and you can get to work. Now, support hand grip, as far forward as you can get it, is not sustainable for the long term. If you hold that stance for a very long time, you're going to fatigue and you're eventually just going to need to put the rifle down. That's perfectly okay. You're a human being. Muscles have their limits. So if you do run into that, simply pull your support hand closer to the magwell. You can get right up against that magwell if you need to. Whatever it takes, keep the gun running. Keep yourself running. Don't fatigue yourself unnecessarily. Find a good index point to work from and be able to move back from that if you get fatigued. Another thing to note about both of your elbows, do not chicken wing. By chicken wing, I mean extending those elbows in a very lateral manner as far out as you can get them while you're holding that rifle. That looks, for one, kind of silly, but furthermore, it actually makes you a much bigger target. So if we're talking about defensive shooting here, you want to make sure that you bring those elbows inwards as far as you can to your torso, thereby making yourself a much smaller target. Another really crucial component here is going to be your stock. If you can get an adjustable stock, you want to make sure that you have it set for a length of pull that works for you. Generally, if you're shooting standing up or kneeling, a good guideline is to get your shooting arm in a 90 degree, hold the gun, and then extend that stock out until you hit your arm. Make sure that you're maintaining that 90 degrees and wherever you kind of find that stock to be, that's going to be a really good starting point. Now, you should try this out, you should adjust it as necessary, tweak it to however works best for you, but this is a good guideline. Another really important note here is that generally when you go prone, you're probably going to want to extend that stock to be a further length of pull away. Generally, I like to go prone and lock that entire thing out as far as it goes. That's pretty comfortable for me on most ARs, but your mileage may vary. But regardless, 
The principle is kind of the same. You generally are gonna want a longer length of pull if you're going prone. Once you're done and you're gonna stand up, just return the stock back to its original position. Now, a really obvious question here would be, where do you put the stock or brace? That's a really, really crucial one. And you wanna make sure that you get this right because it's gonna give you a lot better control of the gun. Reach your firing arm forward and feel for a little pocket in between your shoulder and the rest of your torso. That's ideally where you're going to place the stock. Try your best to line the top of your stock with your shoulder because the axis of reciprocation and all the recoil that you're going to experience needs to actually go into your shoulder and it shouldn't be over it if you can help it. You then want to push that shoulder a little bit forward. You wanna apply forward pressure on that stock because if you don't, there's just gonna be a big gap there and it's not gonna help you reduce any recoil. Next, you're then going to take your support hand and pull the entire carbine back into your shoulder. By creating this push-pull of force, you're gonna create a much more stable shooting platform and the recoil is going to be much easier to manage. Now, if you wanna test this and make sure that you're doing this right, I generally recommend getting your carbine slung on you and only put your support hand on it. Leave your firing hand free. Then try to acquire a good, consistent sight picture just by using your support hand. Make sure that you're able to pull it effectively into your shoulder, push your shoulder forward, and make sure that your stock placement is consistent and good. The general principle here is to make sure that you have a good equilibrium of forces in your push and pull method. If your carbine tends towards your shooting side hand, you're probably not putting enough shoulder pressure forward into the stock. If your carbine tends towards your support hand side, you're probably pulling the entire carbine back and further to whatever your support hand side is. Make sure that you're applying equilateral pressure and keep everything nice and square. Moving down our list of points of contact, we also have cheek weld. Cheek weld is very important. That is the indexing point for which you actually orient your eyes and your face on your gun. This is extremely crucial for one, by having a good cheek weld, you actually further isolate the firearm and it is more controlled under recoil. By having a more consistent place to put your cheek, you're also going to have more consistent eye positioning. Thereby, you reduce the time that it takes for you to aim and you're gonna make quicker shots. Now, where exactly you put your face on your buttstock or brace is entirely dependent on your face, on your buttstock and brace, and the optics height that you're working with. Experiment, see what works best for you, and just drill it and make sure that's consistent. You also want to make sure that you're bringing the carbine up to your eyes and not the other way around. Again, you want to avoid that tactical turtle that I was talking about. You just want to make sure that you're keeping your neck upright and you're not straining everything. Now, the fifth point in contact is slings. The concept is really simple. You're simply using the tension of your sling, if properly adjusted, to further position the firearm against your body, frame everything in a nice and neat manner, keep tension on the gun so that you're not doing as much work physically. Sling is there to make your life a lot easier. I'm not gonna go into all the details on how to use it because I put an entire video out about it, so go check that out, but I definitely recommend it and don't ever forget about this one other point of contact. All right, putting this all together, let me demonstrate good and bad stance and points of contact. All right, now the bad stance. Note that I'm very bladed, which causes the buttstock to not seat properly into my shoulder pocket. I am not pushing very far forward with my shoulder, and I'm also not pulling back. My grip is just generally loose and very poor here. See what happens to the recoil. With regards to points of contact, these things do differ when we get into other kinds of stances. For example, if you get into a kneeling stance where you have your non-dominant leg bent forward and your dominant leg bent behind you in which you are resting on, you're gonna have to adjust. Your dominant sidearm is generally not gonna need to do anything differently here, but your support arm will because you're going to rest that against the inside of your thigh on your support side. Do not put the bone of your elbow against the bone of your knee because you're just gonna create a very slippery rotating surface and that's gonna be very bad for stability. So just make sure that you lock the outside of your elbow onto the inside of your thigh near your knee, not on it. Now, the prone position seems pretty easy. You're lying flat on your belly and you're just shooting your carbine, no problem. Well, you gotta think this through a little bit further. 
Make sure, of course, that your carbine is resting against something. That could be your terrain, it could be a shooting rest, it could be a bipod, it could be a backpack, whatever. You just wanna make sure that you have some point of contact that is supporting the forward end of that muzzle as best as you can. Then have your elbows planted firmly into the ground. That will also give you better control as you manipulate and fire your carbine. Then have your knees also planted against the ground to better help absorb recoil. And lastly, have your legs splayed out with your feet on their sides flat against the ground as best as you can. Don't sit there with your toes on the ground and your heels up in the air. That's gonna needlessly make you a taller target and it's not gonna help at all with stability. Moving on, let's finally start shooting. But before we start shooting, safety first. And literally here, I wanna talk about the safety on your carbine. If you are not actively shooting and aiming at the target you intend to shoot, your safety has to be on at all times, no exceptions. If you are at a low ready, that safety is on. Once you pull that muzzle up and you aim down that sight and you are confirmed ready to go and you are ready to actually engage that target, then flip the safety off. Once you're done firing, safety goes back on and then you return to low ready. This principle applies across the board no matter what you're doing, just make sure that that safety is being used properly. Finally, we're ready to start pulling the trigger. Make sure that your five points of contact are well established. Make sure that you got good grip, that you're pulling the carbine back in your shoulder and you're pushing forward with your shoulder, that you have good cheek wells and that your sling is tensioned correctly. And finally, you can get your safety off once you're on target, put your index finger on that trigger wherever it feels most comfortable. Ideally, it should be positioned in a way that allows you to pull the trigger straight back without pulling side to side and then stage that trigger as necessary, whether that's a one stage or a two stage, just once you hit that wall, give it a good squeeze and pull back and hold your breath when you're doing so. I think generally you should have your lungs at about 50% capacity if you can help it, or you can try shooting while you're exhaling. Experiment with that and see what works for you. Finally, you fire the shot and then you return your sights to target and make your follow-up shots not very complicated, but ensure that your stance, your grip, all your fundamentals here are solid. So long as you understand that, you then want to study how the recoil pattern of your carbine works. That'll better inform how you want to correct for it and get those sights back on target as quickly as possible. Next, let's talk about reloading. If you ever intend to use more than one magazine in your carbine, you probably need to know how to reload it. To start, if your carbine does have its bolt locked back on an empty magazine, you may want to reference that first to ensure that your firearm is actually out of ammunition. If you can visibly inspect that, do so. Flip it on whatever axis you need to in order to inspect it. See that bolt, see that it's open. You are then ready to actually begin reloading. Personally, when I'm shooting ARs, I generally can actually hear and feel the difference when the bolt locks back. I know that I need to reload then. There's no question about it. I don't really have a problem detecting this every single time, but it is a good practice to get into to still just confirm that you actually need to reload. It doesn't take very long and it's very easy. Once you're certain you need to start reloading, put the firearm on safe. Now, there are certain rifles that this is not actually realistic to do so with, such as AKs, in which case you need to reciprocate the bolt in order to finish the reloading process and you need to have the safety off in order to do so. That just simply isn't feasible. So there are exceptions to this rule, but if you can, I generally do recommend putting the gun on safe when you begin the reloading process. Next, you're gonna wanna tuck that stock under your arm and bring the carbine up. That way you can actually see what you're doing. It gives you good leverage and allows you to manage that reload so much better. Then simultaneously release and or remove the magazine, reach for a new mag and replace it. Once the new mag is in, you're then going to charge the bolt and or send it back into battery. Congratulations, you are now done reloading. You can re-engage the target. And that wraps up my video on the fundamentals of carbine shooting. This is simply an introductory primer. It is by no means a comprehensive guide. I will be releasing other videos about more specialized techniques as time goes on, but I did want to create a simple jumping off point here. All that being said, I am just one girl on the internet talking about this stuff, and there's so many more things that need to be said about it, so don't be shy. Feel free to jump in in the comment section below and add your own thoughts. Also, if you found this video useful, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell too. I also want to holler at all my all-stars on Patreon. You're the real MVPs. I really couldn't do any of this without you, so I sincerely appreciate every single one of you. 
you want to go help chip in, you can always go to patreon.com slash tactical GF. The biggest contributors are named at the end of the video. And that's all the carbine talk I've got for you today. I really appreciate you all tuning in. Please be good to each other out there. And as always, please take care. Bye.